Yeah, uh, Sweeney's uh, was open first in, well, Sweeney's or Sweeney's, in fact, uh, the chemist first was started in 1850 by a family called Sweeney or Sweeney, depending on which branch you're talking to, and uh, it, it's been working, uh, or it has been working as a chemist until 2009, and in February of that year, uh, the two ladies who uh, ran Sweeney's at the time, the Quincy's, has retired, and then it closed altogether until October of the same year. Then we took it over and we run it on a voluntary basis. This place here was uh, made famous in uh, Ulysses in chapter 5, the one called the Lotus Eaters, when Leopold Bloom, one of the main protagonists, comes in to buy face cream for his wife Molly, who's a singer, and uh, when he's doing that he looks around the interior of the chemist and he describes it. And he makes uh, quite a lot of comments on about the bottles and different things he sees and also the type of things that were it was possible to buy in the chemist uh, at that stage. The chemist turned back page after page, sandy shriveled smell, he seems to have a shrunken skull and old quest for the philosopher's stone, the alchemist. Drugs aid you after mental excitement, lethargy then, why, reaction? A lifetime in a night gradually changes your character. The first fellow that picked an herb to cure himself had a bit of pluck, simples, Want to be careful. Enough stuff here to chloroform you. Test turns blue litmus paper red. Chloroform, overdose of laudanum, sleeping drafts, love filters, paragorics, poppy syrup. Bad for cough, clogs the pores or the phlegm. Poisons, the only cures. Remedy, where you least expect it. Clever of nature. Mr. Bloom raised a cake to his nostrils, sweet lemony wax. I'll take this one, he said. That makes three and a penny. So that's where we feature her. Yes, indeed, we have uh, old prescriptions because um, Leopold came to collect a prescription for his wife that day. These were wrapped in brown paper. This is what we, you'd collect in a chemist, uh, say, in 1904 or before that or after that. And instead of collecting pills, you, you'd you collect uh, a brown paper package wrapped in, in, in tied up in string here. And many of them were herbal. As you can see, this one here is slightly open, and this is a piece that looks like uh, valerium, which was, would have been sold if you couldn't sleep or if you had problems. And also, they had uh, willow bark like this, and you'd infuse this. And of course, if you had a headache, it replaced, uh, or it, uh, it was used in place of aspirin. Have you tried any of these remedies? Yourself? All of them. <laughs> Just look at me. <laughs> <laughs> and you were saying there's some old photos left around. Yes, yeah. Over in this door here, we have, because the chemists, they would develop film as well. So they, uh, people would bring their film in. Of course, people were great at bringing film in, but not very good sometimes at collecting it. So here we have lots of pictures. And of course, um, judging by the clothes the people are wearing, they're probably mid to late 40s or early 50s. And of course, there were many hospitals around here. So many of the pictures taken were of, of nurses. And of course, even we have some of the zoo. And of course, uh, Dublin Zoo had a, a famous elephant who you could uh, go for a ride on his back. That was the big day out where you went to the do, is Dublin Zoo and you, 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 you got your elephant and so on. And Joyce himself had a kind of an odd relationship with this area. He has that history with Nora. Yes, yeah. Awesome. And of course, um, uh, Nora Barnacle, a young Galway girl who came up from Galway because she'd had uh, problems with one of her uncles and he'd uh, beaten her because she was going out with a young Protestant. She came to Dublin and she found a job in Finn's Hotel, which is just around the corner. And uh, it was there uh, that Joyce saw her on the street for the first time and he had an eye for the young ladies. And of course he approached her, gave her a book of his poems and he asked her for a date. And uh, of course uh, she didn't turn up for the first date, but she watched, she, he arranged to meet her on Clare Street and she could see him waiting from one of the upstairs uh, windows and she watched him to see how long he'd wait and then uh, of course she couldn't go out or she didn't want to go out we we're not quite sure uh, the following day he, go he went into the hotel left a note for her and asking her to meet him again and he said if she didn't answer his note that she he would never bother bother her again however uh, she agreed to meet him and that was on the 16th of June uh, 1904 and of course uh, that's when Ulysses was set and I think it's a celebration of his meeting with her which was a great success and of course um, uh, she made a man of him. Any kind of fun stories or incidents that have happened while you've been here or odd characters? 
yeah, we've had lots of lots of uh, unusual uh, happenings. Uh, we had a Spanish uh, family who came in here one Sunday morning, and uh, uh, I speak languages, so I was speaking Spanish with the family, and uh, I was asking uh, them if they spoke English, and they all pointed to the gentleman, and I asked him where he'd learned his English, and he said that he'd learned it in uh, Dublin uh, 44 years ago, and then I asked him what part of Dublin, he couldn't remember, said it was too long ago, Then I asked if he remembered, if he kept in touch with the family, and he said, no, because, you know, they would have died. And I said, well, did they have children? And he said, yes, they had a lot of children. And then I asked him what the name was. He told me, and it turned out they were friends of mine. And uh, I, I rang them there and then, and then we had dinner the following day. So 